Now let us talk about the management aspects of rheumatoid arthritis. The treatment of choice in anyone with rheumatoid arthritis is going to be the DMARDS. This is a long term therapy. What are DMARDS? Disease modifying anti rheumatic drugs. Only for acute flare or patients who are presenting for the first time, I can use corticosteroids and or NSAIDs, but they are not DMARDS. NSAIDs are not DMARDS, corticosteroids are not DMARDS. So, DMARDs are different drugs. They will be used for long term maintenance therapy. And DMARDs can be divided into three types. Number one, conventional synthetic DMARDs. Conventional synthetic DMARDs, which include drugs like methotrexate, which is a dihydrofolate reductase inhibitor or a folate mimetic. And we have leflunomide, which is a dihydroorotate reductase inhibitor. And we have sulfazalazine and we have hydroxychloroquine. Remember, the first three drugs are basically immunosuppressive drugs or we can call it as immunomodulatory drugs. But hydroxychloroquine is neither an immunomodulator nor an immunosuppressive drug. Rather, it is just an anti-inflammatory drug, but very, very commonly used in RA as well as in SLE patients. And the second type of DMARDs will be biological DMARDs. And we have the latest group of DMARDs called as targeted synthetic DMARDs as well. Targeted synthetic DMARDs. What are the DMARDs that we don't use in clinical practice right now for treating rheumatoid arthritis? They are also conventional synthetic DMARDs only like gold, D-pencilamine and even azathioprine is not commonly used in the setting of RA. Azathioprine is very commonly used in other autoimmune disorders but in the setting of RA it's not that effective. Not very effective that's why Unless and until you have contraindications for other DMARDs, you are not going to use azathioprine commonly in the management of rheumatoid arthritis. What are the important side effects that you need to know with regards to these immunosuppressive drugs that comes under the territory of conventional synthetic DMARDs? When it comes to methotrexate, one of the most common side effects is gastrointestinal symptoms like nausea, vomiting and GA upset. Patients can develop stomatitis and mucosal ulcers as well which is also quite common. And patients can develop pneumonitis and interstitial lung disease. We'll talk about that in the ILD section in the pulmonary medicine as well. Methotrexate is one of the important cause of drug-induced ILD. And patients can develop severe myelosuppression, where the patients can present with cytopenias like anemia, leukopenia, thrombocytopenia, or even pancytopenia. And patients can develop hepatotoxicity. And long-term use of methotrexate has been linked to the development of cirrhosis and portal hypertension also. If the patient develops pneumonitis or significant hepatotoxicity like AST LT elevation more than 2-3 to three times the upper limit of normal or the patient develops severe bone marrow suppression, you have to immediately stop methotrexate. And what about sulfazalazine? Sulfazalazine is contraindicated in patients with G6 period deficiency, a very very important point. And it can also cause something called as reversible male infertility, one of the old AIMS questions. And what about hydroxychloroquine? We have to monitor the eyes with fundus examination because it can cause retinopathy. That's why long term monitoring of vision is very important if the patient is using hydroxychloroquine. But if they ask you what is the first choice, DMARD, it is methotrexate. Methotrexate is going to be the base or we can call it as the baseline treatment in patients with rheumatoid arthritis. Often this is the first drug or in your terms I can say the first drug of choice in the setting of rheumatoid arthritis is methotrexate. To begin with we are going to use either methotrexate or leflunomide. I repeat to begin with I am going to use either methotrexate or leflunomide. In very advanced cases I can combine but in general to start with most of the patients will be having either methotrexate in the regime or leflunomide in the regime and if that doesn't work over a period of next three to six months then I can add sulfazalazine and hydroxychloroquine sequentially. Most patients with rheumatoid arthritis will be on methotrexate, sulfazalazine and hydroxychloroquine. This is also referred to as the famous triple therapy in rheumatoid arthritis. In case if the patient is having intolerance or contraindication to the use of conventional synthetic DMARDs, I can use biological DMARDs as an alternative because these drugs have been approved for monotherapy. On the other hand, if I am not having a good response to conventional synthetic DMARDs over the next 3 to 6 months, then I can add biological DMARDs on top of conventional synthetic DMARD like methotrexate. 
So biological demands can be used as a top-up therapy also. But generally, in patients who don't have a good response, still we continue with methotrexate because it's a kind of a base drug. It's a very effective drug and better not to stop unless until there are side effects or contraindications. And it's important to understand that two biological demands should never be added. Two drugs in the same group should never be added because if you add two drugs in the same group, the risk of immunosuppression and fatal infections is very, very high. But you can add any number of conventional synthetic demands if you want. Doesn't matter. Or you can add biologicals on top of your conventional synthetic demands. Even that is fine. But two biological demands in the same patient, definitely no. And what are the most common biological demands that are used in practice right now? Anti-DNF. In fact, this is the most effective biological therapy in the setting of rheumatoid arthritis because this is a key cytokine. We know that. And what are the anti-DNF drugs? We have five drugs in the market. One is infliximab, second is etanercept, third one will be golimumab, fourth cetolizumab, available in pegylated formation, called also called as pegylated cetolizumab, and last but not the least, we have adalimumab. My favorite is adalimumab because infliximab, etanercept, and adalimumab is very commonly available in India. And adalimumab can be given subcutaneously also, whereas infliximab should be given by IV infusion in the hospital. So my favorite is adalimumab, but golimumab and cetolizumab are not very commonly available in India. And we have other drugs also, like for example, we can make use of CTLA-4 fusion protein that is called as abatacept. Whenever you encounter a fusion protein, the molecule is going to end up with something called as sept. That indicates it's a fusion protein. Abatacept is a CTLA-4 immunoglobulin fusion protein. It's going to block the co-stimulatory signal in the T cell activation process. And we can also make use of anti-IL-6 receptor antibodies like tocilizumab and sarilumab because IL-6 is also a key cytokine. And because IL-1 is also a key cytokine in the setting of rheumatoid arthritis, you can use anti-IL-1 receptor drug like anakindra. And anti-CD20 molecules like rituximab is also going to be very, very helpful. That is because RA is ultimately a disease of antibodies. And B cells are the ones that are going to ultimately generate those antibodies in the future so you can kill those B cells or activated B cells by targeting the CD20 molecule with the help of rituximab. And what are the side effects? When it comes to anti-TNF, you have to know that these drugs can increase the risk of reactivation of tuberculosis. The patient is having latent TB infection and if you give anti-TNF in those patients, it's going to increase the risk of TB reactivation. That is why prior to Starting these drugs, you should definitely do a test to confirm the presence or probably absence of latent TB infection. Like for example, we can do Manto or we can perform IGRA also. That is called as interferon gamma release assay testing, which is famously called as TB quantiferon gold commercially. Mm -hmm.